Y'all are gonna love my guest today. He is a podcast coach and consultant, a real estate investor, and the founder and host of the top 25 business podcast called Build Your Network, where he is dedicated to helping entrepreneurs like us cultivate genuine relationships, grow your inner circle, and leverage a powerful network the right way. Here he is, the man, Travis Chapel. Hey, Travis, what's up, man? Liberty, how's it going? Hey, good. I'm blessed. Hey, I just want to say I appreciate you. Thank you so much for coming, and thank you for all the value that you give to the world. Yeah, of course. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for uh, everything that you do. Thank you. Um, this has been a hard journey, but you know, I, I, you know, something I forgot to mention this. Um, it's better to say it in like, well, we're not face to face, but <laughs> pretty much face to face. But yeah. Um, but um, I just want to thank you for your patience with me and uh, you know, the fact that we can like kind of rebuild, I guess is the word rebuild our relationship. Sure. You yeah, know? of course. Happy to, happy to, uh, happy to chat anytime. So do you remember how we first met? I believe it was through John Lee Dumas. Yeah. 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 Cause, um, I saw, I think I saw something on his website about, uh, coaching or something. And, mm -hmm. and I said, uh, JLD refer, you know, and so, um, he's like, yeah, this is your guy. And I think I said, isn't there a woman or something? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, no, no. He's like, he's not, this is your guy, you know? Um, but yeah, a lot of stuff has happened since then. So ever since you guys have uh, been on my show, now I've been listening to your podcast a lot more. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Glad yeah. to hear it. Um, so I, I want to talk about, basically, I kind of want to, there's a lot of information that I haven't gotten from your backstory, right? Mm -hmm. and, and I love your saying how you said, you know, if you want to be in the top 1%, you know, you, then you got to connect with the 1%, right? Mm -hmm. So, but, but before you, you know, you got to where you're at now, you were actually, you went to college, went to Bible college, you were preaching and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, and, yeah. Okay. So, so, yeah, I can kind of go into that story if you want me to. Yeah. Like from there to where you're at now, what cool. was the. Yeah. I'll just give like a kind of a synopsis. So, uh, from the time that I was about three until uh, 21, I went to this really giant church down in Southern California called Lancaster Baptist. Um, it's a mega church of sorts. It has, you know, six, 7,000 members or something like that. And uh, it also had a school on the campus. So it went from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade. So I uh, went to church there about the time when I, you know, from the time that I was three, but when I was five, I was enrolled in kindergarten. And so I went from kindergarten all the way through 12th grade to the end wow. of school as well. Um, and so the better part of my life, you know, I'm, I'm 27 right now. So, you know, for the, for 20, basically 20 years of the 27, I've been alive, almost seven days a week was spent on that campus Wow! Um, because I had church on Sunday, twice a day on Sunday. We had church on Wednesday night. We had soul winning on Saturdays. Um, and then we had school Monday through Friday. Um, plus, you know, sports, extracurriculars, activities, wow. all that kind of stuff <laughs> as well. So yeah, basically yeah. everything that I knew was, was kind of on that campus and um, that kind of the whole culture there was very much in, in the high school. There weren't many options for like what you're going to do after high school. Mm -hmm. basically, so uh, on the same campus, there's a church, there's a school, but there's also a college uh, that tr it's uh, specifically a ministerial uh, college. Um, wow. <laughs> for the ministry only. So uh, growing up, it was basically like either you're going to go to that college or you're going to do something different. There wasn't like a, <laughs> they didn't give you like, you know, 50 options. They gave you two options, like Bible college or no Bible college. You know, they didn't really. <laughs> so if you chose the no Bible college option, they didn't really like help you figure out what that was. Yeah. They didn't help you like, they didn't help you like you know, get your transcripts in order so that you could apply for a different college or that you could get into a good school or whatever. It was pretty, pretty much most of the people either went to that college or they went to the junior college that was in the town. So mm -hmm. um, there wasn't a lot of like pushing you to figure out what's like, what's good for your life or what you want to do in your life or whatever. So I just kind of defaulted to the ministry option because that's what I felt like was going to be the best decision for me moving forward. 
And uh, so I ended up going to Bible college. And um, in my, let's say, junior year, I believe it was, uh, uh, spring semester of my junior year of college, um, I was working a landscaping business that I had been working since I was, uh, since before I was a senior in high school. Because so I was always kind of a hustler and I was just trying to make money doing what I could. So, you know, I, uh, obviously as a high school, you don't have a lot of startup capital, but uh, mm-hmm. I just remember uh, borrowing my dad's lawnmower and asking people if I could mow their lawns. So I would go mow lawns and that's how I'd make money. And then I would, I started doing, uh, started putting in proposals for um, putting in lawns for like house flippers and real estate investors and stuff. And, uh, and so I started doing some, some lawns like that. And I kind of kept that going throughout college. And then my junior year, a friend of mine uh, basically started knocking on doors, doing door to door sales. And um, I saw one of his paychecks and was just like, wow, I was, I was, I was really <laughs> blown away by how much money that he had made doing that. And so I was like, uh, yeah, can you, uh, get me a job interview, you know, with your supervisor? And he did. And I ended up, um, interviewing like a week later. And then a couple of days later I was, I was out knocking on doors and, um, that was kind of my first exposure to the business world, uh, in, on a, on a way, in, in a way, you know, I was, I was in, in the sales part of that business and, um, really enjoying what I was doing. And so that was kind of the first time that really made me second guess the decision that I'd made to be in ministry because at the same time I was going, I was driving every weekend down to um, Newport beach, California, where I uh, interned at a church down there. Mm -hmm. Um, So I interned at a church every weekend for like, so worked there all day, Saturday, all day, Sunday, and then we'd drive back and then we'd be back for college for classes on, on Monday and then went to school Monday through Friday. So, um, uh, on the weekends when I would go to the ministry that I was working at, I found myself looking forward to getting back home so that I could work my sales job and yeah. then dreading the weekends to go work at the church, even though that's what I was supposed to be doing for the rest of my life. And it was the first time that I really stood back and considered like, oh, wow. So the thing that I'm supposed to be doing for the rest of my life is the thing that I'm like trying to not do right now. <laughs> and the thing that I'm the thing that I'm supposed to be quitting in like six months when I graduate college, I really like doing and I want to keep doing. So it was like the first time where I'd really had something to wrestle with in terms of what I was going to do. And it was, you know, really taboo in that culture to go to that school, that college, and then not go into ministry. So right. it was kind of a, it was kind of a lonely period of time uh, because I, I didn't feel like I could talk to anybody about it. I didn't feel like, you know, I, the, the couple of times that I had, that I had brought it up to good friends of mine, they immediately shut it down and just like, were trying to convince me that ministry was the way ministry was the path. And that, you know, Satan was just tempting me with money and I shouldn't, you know, <laughs> I shouldn't listen to those temptations and all that kind of stuff. So um, that was like the general consensus. So I, that, I mean, I, I just kind of kept it to myself and kind of hoped that like it would just change. And of course it didn't. And so um, basically uh, when I graduated college, I was doing a bunch of interviews for churches. They, they, bring, they bring a bunch of pastors in and uh, uh, for like interview days, they call it. And then you go out and interview with a bunch of the pastors on the school campus because uh, they want you to be placed in a ministry before you graduate. And so I had one conversation with the pastor that was up in Fresno and he kind of told me that he just wanted me to be a part of his ministry. He was like, look, man, I, I like what you do. I like who you are. I think that you'd be a good fit in our, at our ministry. He was like, and in whatever capacity you want that to be in. So he gave me the option of, he's like, if you want a full-time position, we have a full-time position for you. If you want a part-time position, we have a part-time position for you. <laughs> he's like, if you just want to come up here and work a job and come to the church, that's fine too. We would just like to have you come up here. And that was the first time in my life, Liberty, that I looked at that, that somebody was like looking me in the eye and telling me that I didn't have to go into full time ministry if I didn't feel like it was the right move for me. And so I took it. I, I took the opportunity. I I, um, I took the part time position at the church just so that I could tell everybody that asked me that I was going into ministry. You know what I mean? Like so, like if somebody asked me, "Hey, yeah. what's your plans after college?" I could say, "Oh, I'm going up to Fresno to work at this church," even though my full time job was going to be like working sales and and being in business. So. Um, that was, that was really like the first thing for me. And then when I, when I finally moved out to Fresno and started working the sales thing, I didn't end up working part-time at the church and I ended up just like going full fledged into sales, um, which, which, you know, ended up working out really well. And then, um, and then after that got into podcasting, which brings us to now. <laughs> wow. It's like you, I was going to ask you, I was going to ask you about the money thing and the, Oh, that's evil. Um, you just answered my questions. Like, 
I mean, for me, I already know that what I'm doing is right. Hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. But it's it's very lonely. Like you said, it's very lonely. Yeah. Because yeah. you're not going to get people. People don't. People know that it's not evil to have money, mm-hmm. but they're not going to admit it because they're too lazy to put the work in. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. A lot of, and and this obviously isn't a blanket statement. You know, it's not doesn't go for every single person that doesn't have money. But a lot of times, there's a negative stigma around money, because people that don't have money are trying to excuse why they don't have money by just saying that it's bad to have money. By saying that, well, if you have money, you've probably screwed over a bunch of people along the way. And yep, exactly. Person because you did this, <laughs> this. And when in reality, like the people that I know that have a lot of money are some of the best people that I know. Like they're some of the most generous, yes. most giving, most caring. Like they're, they, 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 they impact the world. Mm-hmm. They give a lot of money yep. to charity. They help people out. Like they're some of the most giving and caring people that I know, but they have this yep. negative stigma because the 90% of the population that doesn't have money is trying to excuse away the reasons yep. that they don't have money instead of taking ownership. Because here's the thing, Liberty, I think it comes down to self-awareness. Like yep. if you're cool working a nine to five and like having a $65,000 salary and a 401k and benefits, like that's cool. Do you like, I, I'm not trying to convince right. you that my way is better than yours, but like, if you're going to, if you're going to sit there and call me a bad person, just because like I have money when you didn't decide to go that route, like that's where I, where I have an issue. And, yeah. and some people just want to demonize it to make themselves feel better about why they don't have money. And, yeah. And it's not just money. That's their attitude towards everything. If they, if, if they, if somebody does something that you are doing, I would normally say something that you can do and they demonize it and criticize you for it. It's not because they can't do it. People say, oh, they're doing, they're, they're criticizing you because they can't be like you. They can. It's because they're unwilling to do it. It mm-hmm. goes for money. It goes for everything. Exactly. It, it's their attitude towards everything. People criticize me, say I'm on drugs because I'm singing and dancing all the time in public. Well, it makes me feel good. I love it. It's my medicine. I don't do drugs anymore, you know? Yeah, right. So, and when people accuse you of doing drugs, it's because they're probably doing it. And the Bible even says that. Mm, yeah. I already know. Fair enough. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But one thing you didn't say, though, know, one thing I've heard a lot of that or read it on your website, right? What mm-hmm. you were saying, except for the thing about the evil. Mind. Now that's what I was looking for. Um, people were saying, Oh, you're following Satan. Cause they were trying to convince themselves, you know? But, um, but, uh, one thing you never ever talk about is I read just, it, there's just a little on your website and it says you used to sing. I want yeah. to know about that. The singing. Did you write your songs? Did you, were you getting paid to sing? And, that's funny. Yeah. Um, good question. So I, when I was in college, um, uh, like I, I sang a bunch in church growing up and like in high school, we had fine arts competitions and we sang mm-hmm. in like small ensembles and large ensembles and choir and all that stuff. But um, in college, uh, one of the biggest ways that the, that that college would get more students is they would send tour groups of college students across the country to go sing at churches basically and Mm -hmm. talk to the high school students and recruit the high school students essentially to come to the college. Um, So my soft, the summer before my junior year, I think. So after sophomore year, that summer, I traveled the country basically in a men's quartet, like think like barbershop style quartet music, um, and, uh, we were Southern, basically Southern gospel, um, type of, a, a men's quartet. And, uh, we packed up into a van and we traveled from California all the way to North Carolina and back in about three months. So in like 84 days, we sang in, I want to say 70 something churches. So we were singing almost like every day of the week and, um, and trying to recruit students for the college, which really was like kind of my, one of my first forays into sales, really, if you look at it, because that was before (laughs) I did door to door. Yeah. Um, And it was our main goal as tour groups to get applications for the college. (laughs) After the services, we would, you know, hang out with the teenagers, you know, and uh, try to basically get them to see that going to the school was a good idea and trying to get an application from them so that the school had their contact information so they could obviously nurture the lead and bring people in and try to get them to come visit the campus and eventually get a student out of it. Right. So that was really my first kind of foray into sales was being on that tour group and trying to get, um, trying to get high school students to sign up for college basically. 
Oh, that's cool. That is really cool. Okay, so but you're not planning on like having any music career or anything like that? No, 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 no. I, <laughs> I, I don't. I, I wouldn't say that. Uh, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't call, I wouldn't identify myself as a singer. Like I, I enjoy it, but it, uh, like, uh, there's a difference between enjoying singing and being good at singing. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And like, well, there's a difference between enjoying singing and having other people enjoy your singing. Right. <laughs> yeah, so, right. Yeah. Um, so I would say that, uh, you know, I can carry a tune, but you're probably not going to buy my debut solo album if that makes sense. <laughs> Okay, that's good. I like that. Yeah, that's cool. No, but uh, you know what? I'm just like, you just, you, you keep impressing me. And I didn't know you were 27. Like, I thought you were like 33, 34. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah 27. Well, I mean, you're just so strong and smart and everything. That's amazing. I, that. I mean, you. I just want to acknowledge you, dude. I mean, it's just, I need to meet more people like you. Like you, JLD, <laughs> and, that, and that's what I'm planning on doing. So... One thing I want to say too is I love your your Facebook group. I wasn't active in it because Facebook it, it just drags me in so easily, you know. Yeah, yeah, sure. But um, so I go in there and I find you have the. Uh, this is something I've never ever seen in any other like of the influencers Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. You have a thing where it says mentor, mentee, whatever. And I said, oh, let me see what that is, you know. And so I put my information in there and I said, well. Uh, talk to me if you want to, I'll mentor you and, and talk to you on how to um, meet influencers and stuff, you know, because I met Gary Vaynerchuk and all these other people and, mm -hmm. and um, that was cool. But then another thing um, was you, you said on your podcast, I was listening to today, you said, um, go create a calendar in which I didn't know I had one. I forgot I did that. You said, mm -hmm. go take the link and put it. I didn't know that was something that was acceptable. I thought that was like a forbidden like selling type thing but you said everybody here is just to know each other they're not trying to sell you anything and yep. you know so i was like oh cool you know yeah as so long as you don't today. turn as long as you don't turn the phone call into a sales call you know that's all that's all i ask uh the, the, the coolest thing about the group that we have put together is the uh, people that are in there that are willing to connect with each other. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, there's been some amazing conversations that have come out of those just like 10 minute phone calls that, that people have booked on those calendar links. Yeah. So that's been one of the, the coolest things that we've done with the group this year for sure. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so many things that you can learn from people and that you can't learn on Google, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, and not just mindset things, but actionable things. Um, so I was, I was just thinking about your, um, how much time do we have? Uh, we got about five to five to eight minutes or so. Five to ten minutes. Okay. Okay. Ten, um, ten minutes is like a hard stop, but we got five more minutes or so. Yeah, I don't want to rush, um, but I don't want to um, take too much time either. So, uh, so you're always saying, and this is my the same thing I think is what you said is my only regret is waiting. That's same with me. Every yeah. time I learn something, I want to start sooner and get better at it quicker. Hundred percent. So if you had to start over and do your, um, and start build your network, start over, like what, what would you do differently? If anything? Yeah, that's number one. Number one would be, I would start way sooner than I did. I, I was trying to make everything perfect and awesome. And while I think that there's some, uh, you know, uh, credibility to, to that type of a mindset, I also think that a lot of it is you is a story that you're telling yourself that you're not good enough to launch yet. So mm -hmm. keep putting it off for this reason and that reason. And you find all these emotional reasons to justify it logically. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, you just keep yourself from succeeding ultimately. So, um, I've always, I kind of live by the, the, uh, the phrase in the absence of clarity, take action. Um, because action is what's going to provide clarity, not the other way around. Like clarity, like, you don't get clarity before action. You do something and then you get clarity around it. Um, so that's why I'm really big on like, hey, go try a bunch of things. Go do a bunch of things. Go, go, um, you know, start a podcast or try YouTube or just go experiment. Like do a bunch of different things and see what works, what doesn't. And that's going to provide a ton of clarity for you going forward on what you want to keep doing, what you don't want to keep doing um, and, the, and the path and direction that you're going to go down. So the first thing that I would do differently was I would start my show like six months before I did. Um, mm -hmm. then, um, the second thing that I would do is I would get on YouTube immediately. So, um, props to you for, for being on YouTube. <laughs> That's the second thing that I would do differently is I would, if I could go back is I would, I would get on YouTube immediately with the show. Yeah. 
You know what? Honestly, Travis, I did not want to do a YouTube. I mean, it was a, it was a mistake. Like when I first became homeless, I'm not homeless anymore because home is a condition of the heart. Mm. This happened from God's purpose for me to become wealthy, for me to see all this and realize like, hey, this is wrong. Being poor is wrong. Mm. Being wealthy is good. You're happy. You're free. You can do what you want. You have more time to go serve more people. You know what I mean? I'm going to take my private jet to go to Africa. Mm. You know? Yeah, I was just thinking about YouTube. Like, I was just, I was just trying to, um, like, you're always talking about adding value, right? Mm -hmm. And all I was doing was trying to like talk to myself. Like, I want to become a speaker because I thought one day I'm going to be up there speaking to people on, you know, what, what do they call it? Uh, the pulpit, you know? Because mm -hmm. I have a degree, I have three degrees from Bible college. So that one day, yeah. <laughs> so that's why I liked you, and I, I heard that about you, and I read on your website when JLD yeah. introduced us. Oh, okay. But um, then I was like, um, I just was trying to learn how to speak to people, you know, because being abused all those years, you you don't know what to say because like, like everything you say is wrong, you yeah. know. That's what I wanted to bring up. Um, I wanted to ask you because you you kind of alluded to it somewhat. You were talking about, I think you were talking about on your trip to Europe, that Freestyle Friday, mm -hmm. and you were saying something about like, uh, if you, if you had an, a rough childhood like me or something like that, and it was, um, I forget the words you used, but was there, was there really, did you have a really, um, was it abusive with your parents or, or anything like that? No, no, no. I, I'm, um, yeah, I, I'm pretty clear about stuff like that. Like I, I think there's pros and cons to every way of being raised. Um, and uh, there's pros and cons to the way I was raised. And I'm very grateful for the way that I was raised. I'm, I'm grateful for my parents. They were awesome parents. Um, I'm grateful for, uh, for the people that were around me. Um, uh, but there were a lot of limiting mindsets, especially around money and business, um, yeah. things like that, that I, that I had to spend a lot of time reprogramming my brain for. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not by any means saying that I was, you know, abused or like that I, that it was like a okay. rough childhood. Like I had a very good childhood. I'm very thankful for, for the way that, um, for the way that my parents brought me up. Um, and again, like, like I said, would I change some of those things? Yeah, sure. Like, but I think everybody would change some things. And that's, that's like, I think that's the goal of a parent is just try to do a little bit better than your parents did with you. And then yeah. each generation just kind of keeps doing that. I think that's, that's kind of like the goal of society is every generation is a new and better generation. And um, I think that's just kind of part of the process is like, you know, my parents did the best that they did with the knowledge that they had from the way that they were raised from their parents. And they yeah. did things that, that their parents didn't do with them or did or didn't do things that their parents did do with them that they didn't like or or did like. And so I can take the way that I was raised and look at my kid now and say, okay, what did I like? What did I not like? How do I make this? How do I try to make it uh, improve upon it a little bit? And I think that's that every generation should be doing that. And that's just kind of part of the process. But, um, but yeah, sure. There, there, there's a lot of different, um, yeah, different uh, limiting mindsets and mentalities and um, circles that I had to break free of and break out mm -hmm. of when I decided that I wasn't going to go down the path that everybody else wanted me to go down. Yeah. So that's like, the biggest thing is having support, right? Like yeah, sure. where I'm like where I'm at right now, I have to start meeting more people like you, you obviously, but your advice probably is is to go to the Facebook group, meet more people there that are kinda like on similar levels where I'm at. Mm -hmm. And but still like I'm still reaching out to people. Like I know you know Jim Quick. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could be close enough one day you can introduce us. <laughs> <Right? laughs> I actually never no, so I, I, you never uh, met him? I, I have not, I have not interviewed Jim yet. So uh, I don't have a contact for him, but I uh, will probably happen here in the next few months. I've just never really made a big effort to go grab him. But um, uh, with the new show launch, I might end up doing that. You know what? He's been so good to me. He's been so good to me. And, and he just like comments on my page sometimes. I think he found me through Lewis house. Hmm. But I don't know. He's a good guy. And Jordan Harbinger too. He talks to me in DMs. That's the biggest thing right now is I'm not looking for anybody to even necessarily come on my show. It's just the fact that people talk to me and, you know, like, um, I feel less alone, Yeah, sure. you know, but yes, I want, thank you. Cause well, first of all, I want to say congratulations on the new baby. Thank you. Appreciate what's, that. What's his name again? Cameron. Cameron. Okay. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Kids He's are the best. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, but also, I wanted to, I almost forgot. Thank you. Um, your new show is called World Class. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. So that's launching in March. Launching the first week of March. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to be um, trying to do all those interviews in person, which is a oh. difficult process, but um, it's yeah. been proven to be totally worth it. So um, yeah, we're, we're launching that on YouTube as well as a podcast. Oh, so are you going to do it um, like you do the podcast simultaneously record the audio and the video? Yes. And, okay. Yep. Okay. I see that you have a lot of stuff on YouTube already. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so now we're going to be really trying to like hit that a lot harder this year. Hey, you know, one of the biggest YouTubers in the world has been on my show, Evan Carmichael, yeah. and he's he's doing what you're doing. He's like got multiple channels and, and yeah. it's like crazy. Oh, he, he crushes makes all, it. Yeah, that, he that's makes actually all, my top performing YouTube video is my interview with Evan. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch that one, you know. He's awesome, man. He, you know, he did a meetup here in L.A., and I went to his meetup and that's, that was the second time I had him on my channel. Nice. Yeah. He's a good dude. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah and his wife too. Yeah. Like all of his team, he gets people from overseas and they're always talking to me on the DMS and the, uh, uh, what do you call it? In the comments and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so, okay. So with the world class though, with your show world class, mm-hmm. what, what's different from that and, uh, and, uh, build your network. So building network is only entrepreneurship type of stuff. And, um, it hasn't been as much in the past, but now that we're launching world-class, it's going to be reformatted back into like purely business. So basically I, I talk with seven figure entrepreneurs who have, who have successful businesses. And I talk to them about building relationships and how they've built a saw a strong network mm-hmm. of people around them. So building network is going to be very much focused on networking and business related things. Mm-hmm. World world-class is going to be like world-class, anything. If you're a world-class athlete, if you're a world, class oh, comic yeah. if you're a world-class news reporter if you're a world-class business owner like whatever like if you're a world-class podcaster or youtuber whatever like whoever if you're world-class at something then like then that's who i'm going to be talking to so it's not really like industry specific it's very much of a okay a broader audience okay that's cool yeah. yeah so um okay what was i gonna have? you got so many things you got giving me all these ideas but um crap I had all these questions that come up now. <laughs> um, well, I'm just thinking what we can, we, um, how can we support you in that? Um, you were talking about, you need people to, uh, review it. Rate and review. And, yeah. I'm, I'm going for 500 ratings and reviews in the first 30 days. So I need as many people to jump on and rate and review the show within the first 30 days of launch. So if you can do okay. that, you, uh, that's, that's hugely, hugely supporting my launch. I got you. And then everybody here, hopefully they'll be doing that too. (laughs) Yeah. Um, but other than that, um, when you, I can't remember the phrase or the words that you use, like, um, something about what you you need help. You were talking about in the, in the, in the Facebook group, you need help with people to, uh, to do this. Uh, maybe subscribe to the YouTube channel. The, those are those are those are my main those are my main is calls it? to action right now. Okay. Is subscribe to the YouTube okay. channel and uh, rate and review the podcast when it goes live in March. Okay, you don't need anything other than that, like people that write copy for you or anything. Nope, nope that's oh. it. Yeah, we're good. We're good to go on everything else. So when you let me ask you this about your team, who's mm-hmm. who's on your uh, team? Yeah, I run pretty lean. So it's basically just me. Um, my wife jumps in and does some assistant work for me, and then. Uh, I have a producer, Eric, who manages like my social media accounts and, um, and produces a lot of my content. So oh, wow. Happens. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. You inspired me because once I start to make my money, I want to like, I don't want too many people involved either, you know, yeah, yeah. but I do need some help. <laughs> sure. And everybody does. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's well, cool. Liberty. This has been, this has been super awesome. Thanks for, thanks for having me on the show. Yeah. I just, man. I appreciate you. I thank you. I mean, I'm so proud of you, how far you've come. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. So if you could give one piece of advice to people like someone like me, who is, I'm this close. I'm, I'm incorporated. I'm worth it as incorporated. It's an empire, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm just starting out ground zero. Mm -hmm. Uh, All I have is like, I'm sleeping outside. So I'm, what I'm saying is I'm giving myself credit. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I don't want no excuses. So 
someone starting out, like virtually no friends because mm -hmm. I don't want them in my life. They got excuses. So to build your network, to say if I want to build my network and I want to meet people like you, but I also want people that are like on my level, how would you, if you had one thing to tell that person how to do it, what would you say? I would say to someone like, like if you're just getting started, I would say, um, go get around six figure entrepreneurs, find people that are making a hundred grand a year and, and learn directly from them. Cause those are the, like what they're going to have to say is going to be like, is going to be really close to the point where you are right now, which is basically build something that you can sell and then learn how to sell it. Like if you're under six figures uh, and that goes for any income level under six figures, mm -hmm. then you need to focus on selling whatever, like, so build the product or service and then sell whatever that product or service is. And that's all you should be focusing on. Not teams, not processes, not systems, not resources, like none of the other stuff, just uh, build the service or the product, whatever that is, and then go sell it. That's it. Mm -hmm. I have a store. I, it's like, Spreadshirt where I, I make my designs, but they make the shirts. Does that include, is that included? Does that count? Sure. I would just go for more things that are going to bring in like higher dollar amounts. Like if you can, um, I don't know if, what experience you have with managing social media, but maybe you can go manage somebody's Instagram account for them or something. Like you can actually charge a couple hundred bucks a month to do something like that instead of, instead of like, you know, $12 profit that you make on a t-shirt. So mm -hmm. I, I would look more for those like those things that you can, that you can build up into like a six figure business pretty quickly. That's a good idea. Okay, cool. All right. Well, again, I just want to say thank you for coming, Travis. I appreciate you. Thank you for your time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you for all you're doing. And you know, the biggest thing I got is like what I was going to ask you, thank you for, you know, overcoming the emotional obstacles and rising above the crabs in the bucket and that so-called mentality that being wealthy is evil or whatever. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you, man. Thank you for doing what you do, and I appreciate you for having me on. I hope thank you all you, enjoyed that interview with Travis as much as I did, y'all. And I hope that Travis and I freed you of that poverty mentality that says that wealthy people are bad and that it's wrong to have money, okay? Because it's not wrong. You are infinite in value. You can do anything you want to do, and the more money you have, the more people that you can serve. So thank you so much for being here with us. Do me a favor and comment below. Let Travis and I know your names, and let us know what you're getting into. Do you have a podcast? Do you have a YouTube channel? Help us to support you, okay? Thank you so much. Once again, you are infinite in value. What's my name, y'all? Liberty Justice. With my mind and my money and my money on my mind. Because you're worth it. Thank you.